Okay, so um, welcome back to the Features Written in Code. This is a new video that I'm doing on um, really a sample project using Gesture API from Ionic Framework to create this um, slide up, slide down, button draw, I mean, bottom drawer effect using the Gesture API by uh, Ionic Framework. Um, if this is the first time you're here, please subscribe. If you love the video, please like. Um, subscribers matter. Um, but let's just get started. So first of all, I'm just going to kind of go over the tools that I've used. So here is the Ionic Frameworks um, Gesture API overview. Um, they, the documentation is pretty good. Um, please definitely make sure you check it out. I'm also using the um, use refs um, from React Hook to get a reference to a specific element to apply my gesture to. Um, there is a full blog post about this video called How to Create a Bottom Drawer in React.js Using Ionic Framework Components in the Gesture API. Um, the link to this will be included in the video and from the blog post, you will be able to get access to the video. And then um, the source code is attached to the blog post, but it's also all here on um, Code Sandbox. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm not going to type this whole thing for you. I'm just going to walk through what I have built and you can take a look at the source code yourself. Um, no one needs to watch me type. All right. So let's just kind of, you know, we'll keep it, keep it moving and kind of flow right through this. So the first thing that um, we have here is, oh, just to let you know, this is the basic um, create React app, Ionic, Ionic framework, React template you get when you, um, initialize a React project in Ionic. Um, saving some time, I'm not gonna take you through the whole process, but that's what we have here. Everything that's gonna happen is gonna happen in two files. It's gonna happen in this app.js file, and it's gonna happen in the app.css file. So let's start in the app.css file. So for the app.css file, um, this class that I've created here called bottom drawer is gonna be associated to this object here, um, which is actually my bottom drawer. Um, I'm positioning, I'm using this bottom uh, minus 380. The height of my drawer is 400 pixels. The bottom is uh, minus 380. So what that's doing, it's leaving about 20, 20 or so pixels. That looks like it's more than that. Um, but it's leaving space for this, um, uh, sorry, it's leaving space for the bottom drawer to, to um, be exposed at the bottom of the page here. All right, that's better. Now I'll refresh. Okay, so that's what we have there. Um, this class is also important um, because it's uh, as the uh, absolute position, which is forcing it to be here. And then I have a little bit of padding on the side. So now back to app.js. We'll jump straight down to um, the uh, render and then we'll back into everything else. So what you see here is this is an Ionic app. We have the header, which gives this little toolbar here. Um, then I have my Ionic, um, Ionic content section. I put, put the scroll wide at false to kind of keep everything from moving around as I'm trying to drag this thing up and down. Um, here's just some sample text that's included here, but now here's the meat of it. So what I've done is I've utilized the Ionic card as the base element um, for my drawer. Because uh, so, it gives me the nice outline and a little bit of depth here. Um, and I'm assigning this class bottom drawer to my Ionic card. And so that's why you get it positioned down here at the bottom of the page. Um, here I'm using to, to get the reference of it. Here's my drawer ref. And as I said, I'm using, uh, here we go, here we go. I'm using React's use ref. So it's defined here. And what this will do is when the app launches and I need access to this um, Ionic card element, I'll have it stored in this um, variable called use ref. As I mentioned in the um, blog post, I could have um, done a document query, search for this object based on its class name and found the object, but I decided to kind of try and do it the React way, so I've used this drawer ref. Just a little bit of styling here. I wanted this little button here to be activated, so what we can do is we can click on this to open and close the drawer. So I took an eye on a button, I made it small, put some height, and it's associated to this function toggle drawer. And then here's just the text inside the drawer. Now, the real meat of this is like, how do we get the gesture API associated to this object down here? So what, what we've done is we are using 
um, react use effect. And the way we're utilizing this is we're using it, utilizing it as you did in the old days for the um, component will mount or component did mount. So what we're doing is when the page is first loaded, we find the element that is a drawer and attach the gesture to it using its attach a gesture to its reference using react use ref hook. So we have the ref and to get the actual object in the ref, you have to use current and then we create our gesture. Um, the element associated with the gesture is this current ref. And then what we do next is I'm naming my gesture and I only want to move on the Y coordinate, which is up and down. So I set the direction to Y. Now um, I'll jump back to this later, but what I'm doing here is all I'm saying is that based on the Delta that I get from moving this thing. So let me click on it. As I'm moving it, I'm getting a Delta and I want to take the delta that I'm moving and apply it to the style transform, which basically forces me to reposition this object. So that's how the dragging up and down is coming from me repositioning this object using this translate Y and taking the delta and pixels and applying the style to um, my element C, which is my drawer. Um, now, what we do here now, let me just finish up what I'm explaining here. What I'm saying here is that if the delta is beyond minus 300 pixels, then just get out. Because what that basically means is that um, you, it, what that's doing is it's keeping you from dragging this, this drawer too high up, right? So that's, that's what this is doing. And then this, if the delta Y is less than 20 pixels, what's that, what that's doing, it's helping me to, as I start to move it down, once I go beyond a delta of 20, it'll just move, it'll transform it back to its original, set the, set the um, data attribute that I have on this object to false and force the window to slide all the way down. Now, one of the things that I'm using on here, which I did not cover is um, data attributes. Let me drag this over here for a minute. Um, and it does what it says. It allows me to associate attributes to a specific object. And so what I'm doing is I'm saying that on my card here, I have an attribute called open and I set it to true or false based on if the card is open or not. So anytime I actually close the card, like I did by swiping it downward here, I set it open to false. Also, I'm gonna use this same variable later um, when I try to toggle this button with this open and close by clicking on it. So that's what the on move is doing. So once again, this is keeping me from dragging it too far up. This is saying is as I start to swipe down with it, if after I reach a certain Delta in a downward motion, just assume I'm trying to close the window, we set the style back to what it was before and set the attribute that I have created um, open to false. Otherwise, just continue to take whatever the delta is and reposition the object based on that. Now the other handler, so the two handlers I'm working with on a gesture are the on move and the on end. The, um, what I'm doing here on the on end is once the delta reaches a certain level, I just was assuming that you're swiping it open, right? So what I'm doing is it's about 30 pixels and if it's not open already, then once you reach about 30 pixels, assume the person's trying to open it and transform it or basically re reposition my, car, uh, my drawer um, minus 30, 350 pixels, which will open it all the way. So as I start to, as I, let me grab this. I start to grab this and move it up. Once I reach a certain threshold, it just assumes that I'm trying to open it and it will just open it the rest of the way by itself. And so what that is, that's so that when you're using your hand to kind of scroll this thing up, you don't have to drag it the whole way. Just a little bit of movement up will indicate you're opening it. And when you're swiping down, just a little bit of movement down will indicate you're trying to close it and it'll just move it, it'll open it and close it for you. These are values that you can kind of tweak yourself based on how large you want your drawer to be and how kind of sensitive you want the threshold to be. But that's kind of what that's doing. And so once again, as I start to drag it down, as I start to drag it down, it'll just move it all the rest of the way itself. I start to drag it up, it'll just move it the rest of the way itself. So now back to this data attribute for open and close. This is really what we're using for the toggle. 
So if I get down to my code here, um, in my toggle, which is called when I click on my button here, I am button, toggle drawer, click, open, and cl click on this guy, open, click on this guy, close, close. So what it says is if the, flat, if the attribute on my card is set to open, and it gets this click event, then I want to close. So that so that's when it's in this state. It gets the click event. It wants to ease out. It's going to um, take five seconds to do this, trans this transition, this animation. It's going to reset the style back to nothing. And it, this is the important part. I'm setting. I'm toggling it from open to close. So I click down, and it closes it. Now, when it's closed, and I call the function, it does the exact opposite. I want it to ease in. I'm going to reset it because this is the uh, values that we used up above on the gesture for the open, and I'm going to open it. So um, now when I click, it says that open was false. So it executes this, the five second ease in, the reposition minus 250 pixels, and then set it to open. That's really the basics of what I'm doing. Um, I started out first by creating the gesture uh, by creating the gesture up here. Uh, once I determined, you know, what was the delta? Sorry. Once I determined that um, on move, if it's more than 300, get out. I don't want you to be able to drag it anymore. If I see you're dragging it downward more than 20 pixels, then I assume you want to close. I set it to close. I probably should add the animation in here to kind of give it that nice effect. Um, otherwise, I'm just taking the delta you're giving me and I'm moving this element up and down. And then at the end of the gesture, so when I'm panning or when I'm clicking on and dragging, it takes a look to see what the delta was. And if the element was, I could probably say false, so not open. So if the element was false, then, and um, I have swiped it more than 30 pixels up. So once again, this is up, then it's gonna assume I wanna open it's going to open it. It's going to set the uh, the flag to true, and then it's going to get out. I could, I, uh, the animation is set properly here. And then, of course, you need to enable the gesture. So that's basically it. Um, I don't want to kind of spend too much time uh, rehashing this. The best thing to do is, you know, all the source codes available. Um, the blog post is here where I kind of go through it in a little bit more detail um, and kind of uh, try to explain some of my actions. I have attached all of the source here on the bottom for those who like to read through the source code themselves. It's all attached here on the bottom. And then, as I said, um, it's also here on Code Sandbox, and this link's attached to the bottom. So for those of you who stayed to the end, um, thank you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, give this a try. Bottom drawer is a pretty cool um, uh element to kind of include in your applications. And, you know, it's kind of eye candy. People like to see this type of stuff and it gets them excited about it. So once again, uh, thanks for watching the video. Please like, subscribe, and leave comments below if there's something interesting you'd like to see me work on. Thanks and bye.